again, 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 again. Welcome to today's video. Good morning. Kyle is our featured guest. No, Leji is our featured guest. Leji is actually always featured in my vlogs, but you're actually not Did he? Featured, he kind of took over for me. Yeah. I used to be featured a lot. <laughs> now I'm a rare feature. <laughs> Supposed to prepare questions? Yeah, you needed to prepare interview questions. Okay, are you ready? First question. Yeah. How much do you love your husband? Wow, that's that's a toughie. How do you quantize? Quantize? <laughs> Is that a word? No. Quantify? Quantify. How do you quantize? How do you quantify that amount? That's a new word. Of love. I'm, I'm going to use that for now. Quantize. <laughs> okay, but the first question is actually perfect because you were just working. And people want to know, I've told them before, but people I think need to hear it from your What do you need to hear, guys? About, what do you need to hear? What do you do for work? Why do you travel so much? And then I have a follow-up question. Yeah, I work for the church. I am the family, children's, men's pastor. I kind of oversee sound and tech, and now I'm stepping in to help with young adults, too, so. <laughs> His full-time job is working at our church. Yes. He has a lot of roles at the church. Yes. But it's, I would it's say a transitioning it's, period, and, uh. It, we are a very small church. He's the only yes. staff member besides our two pastors. Lead pastors, executive pastors, so. yeah, and they, they're just as busy, so I kind of fill in the gaps. So with the uh, men's retreats, um. They're amazing, super powerful. At those retreats, I do everything from I'm the first one up at like 5, 6 a.m., more like 5 a.m., setting coffee um, up, getting that prepared and ready for 50 guys. Um, I do that every morning and then, you know, running to the store, picking things up that's needed, um, setting everything up, making sure everything's stocked, drinks, food, snacks, etc. cetera, um, preparing, you know, the table before, you know, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so setting up, breaking down, cleaning up, making sure trash is taken out. And so we have a pastor and a teacher, uh, John Tyson. He's the guy who's like the main teacher. Jeff Bethke is the guy who's like the mastermind, the coordinator. He, he basically is the vision caster and uh, the executor in that sense. Um, and he does some teaching too. Um, and then I do everything in between so they can focus on their roles. Um, and then typically they go to bed around 9, 9.30 p.m. And I'll stay up till like 1, 2, 3 a.m., however long guys want to stay up and continue to press in with them. And I kind of come out in the night to minister uh, when I have more free time. So they call me the nighttime minister, and it works really well. But uh, by the time I wake up and go to sleep, I'm kind of working like 18, sometimes 20-hour days. So it's intense, uh, but it's so good. It's fruitful, and the Lord sustains me in it. Um, his hand's definitely on it, but it's a lot of work. But it makes sense now why I'm filling all the gaps at church. You're a gap filler. I'm a gap filler. I guess it's just part of part of the role that the Lord has me in right now. All right. Well, I think we're going to head out for some coffee, and then we'll have to come back here to put Legend down for a nap, but we'll answer some more questions Sounds as we good. go. Sounds good. I need, like, four shots. Four shots in my system. <laughs> Okay, we moved into the car. It was so windy. But it's okay, because we got coffee, we got food. We got a oh. frittata, we got and a, a little breakfast sandwich. Breakfast sandwich. I didn't even know they did breakfast, but it's yeah, perfect. Good to know. Kylie asked, do you guys have any relationship advice or tips as my husband and I head into this new chapter? We are welcoming our first baby this summer. Aww. I'm nervous our relationship will take a back seat. Mm, possibly. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> it, mean, will, it will. I mean, That's honestly, okay. <laughs> yeah. I would say, well, go ahead, baby, start off. I think it's so valid to think your relationship will take a back seat, but 
because it, it will, but like to not an to an extent, <laughs> but it's like more so your priorities. Mm. I feel like what I've heard is like, it's just going to be like this for a season and to not overthink that. Yeah. Like right now, especially the first few months, like legend was a priority because we had to do so much changing and evolving to learn how yeah. to take care of him. And he's not a priority anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's eight months now. He's a grown man. He fends for himself. Today is his eighth month birthday, by the way. But I just feel like what I've heard from people who have been married for like 30, 40 years is like, oh, it's just going to be that way for a few, like a, a season. Yeah. And not to like think that defines your whole marriage. But I feel like once he was born, we got closer for the first few weeks. And then all of a sudden I felt like super disconnected and roommates. felt like roommates. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just we had to communicate that to each other. Exactly. And I think that's just the biggest thing is to like not judge yourself if your marriage starts taking a backseat. But just communicate that so and i feel like we have to continue to communicate that over and over again yeah. because it's so easy to fall into roommate status yeah and just to add on to what you're saying because i agree with everything you're saying i think it, that's so key the last part she said is you have to communicate it over and over and over again yeah because there's also other things going on in life right mm -hmm. um for us, yeah, I was starting a new position at church and there was like a whole, there was so much change at once. So it was like so many different things juggling at the same time. Um, every situation is different, but ultimately we need reminders, you know, and reminders are okay. It's not, you know, we talked about this and now we're back in this place and I can't believe that. And you haven't changed or done anything. It's, I think an important and a helpful thing that we can do is one, having grace for each other, right? Knowing this is a new season, there's a human being that you're now responsible for, right? That God has blessed you with and you have to steward. So you're stepping into new roles, not just as husband, wife, but as mother, father. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much change, so much you're gonna learn, so much you're gonna grow through. Um, and, and I don't think that ever ends. I mean, it, it hasn't slowed down for us to an extent, but we've become more aware and more intentional and we've um, asked more questions and we've brought up concerns more often. Mm -hmm. um, even just that thought of, I feel like we're roommates again. Yeah. That's okay. It's not a shame, guilt, or condemnation thing. It's just like, a, oh, wow, yeah, you know, actually, I'm seeing that too. I didn't realize that. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. Let's be more intentional. Uh, right. Let's bring the romance back. Yeah, right. Let's go out on date nights more, whatever it may be, to make sure that your relationship doesn't stay in a place of being in the backseat. Yeah. All right, I have to go home because I have a meeting. This boy needs, this guy needs to get in bed. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> that I see in my content are just clean between your toes. You want to clean between my toes? <laughs> Come on, get in there. Use your hair to floss it out. If you actually are. No. Do you want me to? <laughs> yeah. Ew, really? That's so gross. <laughs> Stop. I have a meeting with the girl who does social media for um, Sunday Matters. He was a feisty was little bugger. Sleeping angel. And we have the Pixie Play baby monitor. We used to have a baby monitor that was like non-Wi-Fi and just like very basic, but we upgraded to this one. I think it's really nice because we can watch it from our phones and from long distance. And then with Kyle traveling, mm. it's fun for him to kind of check in on oh, the camera. The best. And he can like do two-way talk, so randomly I'll just hear the baby monitor <laughs> and it'll be like, legend. <laughs> One time you did it while I was trying to put him to sleep. I know, and I because was like, I heard you going like, shh. I was like, stop like, talking. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, but I'll hear him calling for Legend, and then I'll like bring him in so he can see him on the baby monitor. Well, I usually get a notification saying, like, Legend is crying, take a look. And yeah. then I'll open it up, and then I'll see him, or I won't see him, and then I'll just start speaking through it. Yeah. And if he's there, I see him, like, look up, and he's like, oh, where's he at? <laughs> One thing that is really different about their monitor is they have something called Pixie Play, which I will show you guys in a little bit when Legend wakes up, because it's really cool. Pixie, take photo. Oh, you're picking my nose. This is their Pixie Play, and they have a bunch of different animals. This is the Trunky, so it has more of like a calming 
playlist that goes with it and it actually has no batteries in here as you can see legends a little bit fussy right now and you can have it play a soundtrack or you can do a custom recording so right now i have it on the custom recording but you'll see how it kind of calms him down so i just put it under the camera and it'll recognize it and start playing <laughs> And immediately he just is more calm. <laughs> the song we always use to calm him down. It can also play music, so each animal has its own soundtrack. So, like I said, Chunky's is um, a calming playlist. Hi, Pixie. Take photo. So it also has voice commands, as you can see. Just took a photo and uploaded it to our app. You can also say, hi, Pixie stop playing so you can turn off the music and turn it back on with your voice which is nice and it's hands free there are a ton of different features on pixie some of my favorites is the area detections if you go into setting you can turn this on and pick like a safe area for your baby so this has been great since he's been rolling around so i'll just put keep baby in and it'll notify me if he starts to roll <laughs> out of that area. Area detection legend is leaving no longer in a safe area. I can go check the camera and see that maybe he's getting a little outside of where we're comfortable with. Another feature that it has is the covered face detection. If your baby is a little bit younger and doesn't roll yet, this one's a great one to turn on while they're sleeping. Another thing that I love is it will randomly take photos. Obviously before you saw I can like tell it when to take photos but it also just captures a couple photos throughout your day and they are seriously some of them are just like so funny. Just like sweet moments like this that feel candid and special. It's just capturing as our day goes by. Also when it gets a notification it takes a video for each notification so you can look back to see what was going on so anytime he's crying it takes a little video and i got this one the other night i showed kyle it was i'm so glad we got it on video So there's just like sweet little memories like this <laughs> that we get to look back on now. If you guys are in the market for a baby monitor, I would highly recommend Pixie. I'll have all the information below. There's just so many other features that I have not seen in other baby monitors on the market. So yeah, thank you again to them for sponsoring this portion of the video. So are you as a person or does wife and mother, is that a part of your personal brand? Mm -hmm. I would say probably not. I feel like it's more about who I am as a person, like what I enjoy, my hobbies. I think I show like me doing motherhood, but it's like not all about motherhood or not all about being a wife. I think something that I want to step more into is just being a friend to the people who follow me. I think I've kind of like had to separate myself from my audience a little bit um, once I stopped posting about my faith as much because I just noticed like there's no boundaries between my relationship with God and my relationship with my audience. And like, it was just too intertwined. Also my relationship with my husband, cause we were show sharing a lot about our marriage. So it was just like, I think made me retreat a lot. All right, <laughs> Legend just woke up. I had such a good meeting. He was very productive, um, but I thought I would answer another question. This is such a cute moment. <laughs> I'm gonna record it. I'm just gonna feed Legend, but <sighs> camera angle is gonna be weird. <laughs> Jessica asked, do you feel like yourself yet since having baby? It affected me so much the first year. I love your guys' channel so much. P.S. Your son is a doll baby. <laughs> a you. doll baby. You're a little doll baby. No, you're a real boy. <laughs> you're a real boy. Okay, to answer your question, yes. He is a doll baby. I do feel like huh. myself again. I don't know if I ever really went through that identity crisis that a lot of people mention postpartum. And I think I know the reason why. I don't know. Maybe this isn't for everyone, but for me, I actually signed up for this gardening class that I've shared in a lot of vlogs when I was, I feel like I was like two months postpartum. Yeah. It was very early on. And so I had something to look forward to 
and like a little hobby that I did without legend that I felt it really kept me connected to myself and my passions and so I feel like I kind of never lost myself in motherhood I guess because of that so if there's something I could su suggest or give advice to anyone postpartum right now I think it would to be definitely find something that you're passionate about and maybe sign yourself up for a class that way you have a scheduled time mine was every other week which I think was a really good balance but you have scheduled time set apart for something for you to do alone mm. without your baby sorry it's crooked <laughs> it's okay because what, what I hear and I think is a common thing is you lose yourself in it right um, so just having something like you're saying that you're passionate about you're excited about that breaks up the pattern um, I mean, that's just, it makes sense. Yeah. Do you right? feel like you lost yourself? No, yeah. not at all. I feel like dads, I feel like I gained dads more of myself. Oh, that's sweet. I yeah. Dads don't go through that. I could, no, I think some dads do. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. That's I could be wrong, but I wonder what you guys think on this, but I think a lot of guys can lose themselves as well because there, there's such a dying to self that happens, right? You die to yourself. Moms die to themselves too. You know, you have this human being, this baby who relies on you. Um, I mean, when I, if I think about it, when he was born, I didn't do any of like the hobbies that I love doing. Like, let's just use golf, mm -hmm. right? I was really getting into golf. I love golf. And when he was born, I couldn't golf for, I don't know how many months went by. I think I just went golfing for the first time since he was born, actually. Right? You've gone a couple other times, I think. I don't think so. Maybe once with Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so maybe once, but let's say... I had three or four hobbies or a bunch of things that I really loved to do and I couldn't do them when he was born, I could see that being something that would make me struggle. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was already at a point where I was so focused on just God, on family, on my marriage. Um, I wasn't consumed by a bunch of different hobbies and a bunch of different things that were taking precedent or that were so important to me that when I couldn't do them, it didn't affect me very much, if that makes sense. In fact, it was the other, the it was the flip side. I was so focused on like becoming a dad that when he was born, it's like I gained more of myself. There was a lot of work, and sometimes I wanted breaks, um, but ultimately, no, it didn't affect me in a negative way. I think it all just comes from like the mindset and the perspective. Like, what are you really focused on going into it is also going to dictate the response you have afterwards. I think we were also very realistic with what postpartum, what post-birth was going to look like and what it was going to take from us. And I think that realistic perspective helped a lot because we weren't blown away by it. It was more like, okay, yeah, this is it. We signed up for this. This is what's happening. We're excited. And even when it was hard and challenging, we were able to support one another, encourage one another, and just be so blessed by this little human being. Are you going to throw up on yeah, me? Yeah, don't do that. Do right now. <laughs> <Can> you imagine? <laughs> Secure the food. Secure the food. Things are taking a turn today. <laughs> We're going downhill. Lord help us. I know. It's like... Deep breaths. Deep breath. <sighs> Listen, <laughs> let's tell you what happened, okay? The last hour has been something else. We recorded the whole brand deal in slow motion. <laughs> so that was like... An, Not intentionally, by the way. An hour's worth of work. Anyways, I got really frustrated. I got a little frustrated. I got frustrated. I wanted to blame Kyle. Well, she did blame Kyle. <laughs> it was her fault. Well, we we're actually not 100% sure about that, but I'll receive. I'll take it. I, just, it's I think I just needed you to apologize. And I did. And he did. And I did. And I felt better. Oh, but, but then we got through that. And then we're like, okay, let's let it go. Let's just re record it. It's fine. We're going to get food, and then we're going to get propane and bring in our fire pit with us because we're going to go to Poli Poli to eat, which it looks like we're just eating in our car now. For now. For now. <laughs> and uh, as I'm driving, the whole fire pit that has all the rocks on top just tilts and all the rocks fall into the trunk. And we get to the place and um, they don't fill up propane when it's raining. And it's raining, so <laughs> we can't even fill up the propane and we're completely out. And are just like stress and attitudes are getting worse and worse it feels good just sharing it, i know though. we just needed we to, just need to, we needed to tell you guys instead of and pretending everything's okay yeah like if we came back on like yeah, 
jolly answer, jolly. Let's answer another question. <laughs> we probably get in a fight. <laughs> probably. I'm crying. I don't know if it's because I'm laughing or, or I'm releasing all this emotion. <laughs> I think we needed a cry. I do need to cry. <laughs> oh, wow. Feels good. Yeah. It's okay to cry, men, just so you know. <laughs> this is healthy masculinity. How's my burger? Our burger? Oh, yeah. I forgot we're sharing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and rejoice in the trials because they are necessary and only grieve temporarily. So let us rejoice in them knowing that the fruit of the trial is actually to produce the genuineness of our faith, which to the world, gold is the most valuable thing, right, babe? Mm. Most valuable thing is gold, but that perishes by fire. Where to the Lord, the most valuable thing, even more valuable than gold, is the genuineness of our faith, which doesn't perish by fire, but it actually is purified by fire. It's sanctified by fire. It grows stronger by fire. So in this, we rejoice because these trials are necessary to produce the genuineness of our faith. It's the most precious thing to the Lord. It's the best thing in the world. So thank you, Lord, for these trials. Thank you that you are producing the genuineness of our faith, which is the most precious thing to you. Thank you for these trials, Lord. Thank you for these obstacles. Thank you for these challenges. Wow. In Jesus' name. All right. Amen. Amen. It's funny. I always encourage people with that when they go through the trials, and then when you go through trials, it's like... The dang rocks fell over. <laughs> <laughs> My life sucks. <laughs> Honestly, the rocks, a mess. the rocks were the, the shawl that broke the camel's back for me. <laughs> I was so bad. <laughs> And then I open the trunk to put them in and they all just fell out. <laughs> and I'm in the rain just picking up rocks. <laughs> oh, there's a message of that too. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Is that like bad? Am I annoying? No. <laughs> Why'd you act that way? Why'd you respond with that pause? <laughs> Am I annoying? No, you're not. Are okay, you sure? but we need to do a couple questions because I just know legends about to wake up. Alright, well. Because that's how today's going. <laughs> that is how today's going. Okay. It's a blessing of the day. What do you want to know? This how... is fun. We should just hang out like this all day. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Okay. How, I think that's called a podcast. <laughs> I get it now. You get the appeal of I get a podcast because basically you can just like listen to yourself yeah. talk. <laughs> Literally. Your dream. Hey. <laughs> just kidding. I actually am not quite enjoying this. Not fully not enjoying it, but not quite. I'm kind of enjoying it. <laughs> I'm not recording. I was not. All of that was not recording. All of that. I mean, it was recorded on that. So now I have switched but we're over. Like whispering into the microphones. Yeah, probably. But now we've switched over to the proper microphone. Should I re-answer the questions? <laughs> we might have to. Oh my gosh, this Dang. day. We just keep missing all the fun, though. All this, the, all this the in between. Day. This is literally what the day was has been like. It's just one thing after another. One thing after another. Just gotta accept it. It's okay. God is good. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly re-answer that question in case the audio was missing. The question was how to balance work and having a baby and our case is that we both practically work from home kyle um does go to our church on sundays but we only have the building one day a week so he doesn't actually have an office that he goes into so we've had to designate proper work days for each other so kyle gets two days a week where he can do whatever he wants he can go to his meetings he can play golf <laughs> That's Which, what he, hey, he chose to do yesterday hey, with his work day. That was work. That was hard work. I'm feeling it. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I get two days and then she gets two days. So mm -hmm. we know those are our designated work days. So the other two days we can be fully present with Legend. Yes. Um, because when we tried to do work and Legend without designated work days, every day of the week, 
we were just never fully present with legend he knew it was crazy he, he was just upset we were stressed out mm -hmm. um and then we couldn't fully engage in work either we get behind and we realized this is the best system for us to make sure that we stay on top of everything be present parents um, but also designate time for us to get our work done and not fall behind and steward you know our work life as well we didn't get his no i was <sighs> just on that today has been like honestly the most horrible day of recording this video <laughs> <laughs> it literally has but we're in good spirits because we could, we just are laughing it off at this point That's but right. it has literally been the hardest day of recording in a long time which really shows how far we've come yeah because this would ruin us <laughs> like uh, absolutely ruin us like a year or two years ago yeah i think this was part of the reason why we, we stopped, stopped our couple's channel yeah. is because we would get so stressed yeah and we couldn't like get back into it and then there was like anger Forced. and argument and all that to follow and then we would finally get back into it but then it didn't feel right because it was like yeah it just, it just wasn't fun yeah but well, it's because know. of all the junk that we were talking about, <laughs> yeah. you know, but good job. Babe. We've gone okay, a long job. way. Yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Anyways, Legend wanted to join our little podcast. Yes. So here he is. We're going to answer a couple more questions and then we're just going to wrap this video up. Um, the first question I wanted to answer is what is one thing you do differently as new parents? And I feel like I hear so many new parents talking about this and it's comparing sleep. Mm -hmm. That was a big thing. I don't even think we struggled with it too much. I think mostly because Kyle received it well. <laughs> but um, I think I received that is oh. really easy as moms, especially if you're breastfeeding. Um, you're just not getting as much sleep as your husband. And like when Kyle would wake up after I was like feeding legend and caring for him almost all night. And then Kyle would wake up and say, oh, I'm so tired. I was. I was like, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> and yeah that's the thing he was tired he's mm -hmm. a, i got it almost felt like he was not allowed to be tired right and right. it would frustrate me that he would even how dare he yeah. even say that he's tired after my night um so anyways <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> i think having a talk with your partner maybe even before the baby's born yeah i would um of like okay if one of us is tired are we allowed to communicate that or like i don't know if it really frustrates you maybe communicate that with your husband and ask him not to say he's tired anymore or just allow understand that you are both allowed to be tired and it's not a battle of like who is more tired even yes. though i believe it's probably always the mom that's more maybe. tired but there's a good chance i think it's like say, you know? it's like you have to learn how you can support each other's sleep i think it's so important so even recently i feel like i've been like having sleep resentment which mm. i need to confess to you wow Thanks for coming. See, this is powerful when I you think, do this. Yeah. It comes out. This is great. <laughs> because wow. Kyle was away for 11, 11 days. days. I was here alone with Legend. So obviously yeah. doing everything full on, yeah. full time. And I was on vacation. No. Yeah. Kyle was working 20 hour days. So he was probably more tired coming home than I was. Being probably, here but with, we're not comparing. Being here with Legend. But my mind mm -hmm. is like, I have been with Legend every single morning. <laughs> Kyle hasn't. Like, where's my break? Mm -hmm. And I don't get one. Well, you did get one. When? When I came home and then I was on baby duty and you guys went and got massages. Oh, yeah. For one, what, two hey, hours? <laughs> hey, hey, listen. You got a break? Anyways, just just cut it out. <laughs> you're not helping your case. No, I'm just messing around. Um, no, I hear what you're saying, though, and it's totally, it's valid. Yeah, so I just, I felt myself having sleep resentment and I haven't communicated it yet to Kyle until mm, right now. Wow. And I need, I think what I need from you is to wake up with legend in the mornings. Sure. Again, because I don't think that's something, I think you maybe done it once since you've been home and i think i just need maybe two times a week would be yeah. great so it seems like we need to go back and have the conversation we had in the beginning so you understand that i'm always available in i the know mornings. i think what i need because what i tell her is when you wake up like I, i'm a i'm a heavier sleeper yeah so she wakes up and then she takes him and goes out and all and i stay in bed and i sleep i'm a heavy sleeper <laughs> but what i tell her is wake me up yeah. Just wake me up and tell me <clears> to take him. And when you do that, what do I do? He does it every I take time. Him. And it's not like I'm mad or whatever. Yeah. I have no problem doing it. But what I will So I just say... need her to, if you wake up before me, just wake me up and I'm happy to do that for you. Yeah. What I will say is it's really hard for me to ask you for some reason, which I'm going to try to get better at. But I think right. what would be even more helpful is the night before mm. is like, okay, tomorrow you are waking up with legend. Mm -hmm. That way it takes this whole like guilty mom thing mm. in the morning. I don't even have to deal with it. Yeah. It's like, Hey, tomorrow I'm going to wake up with legend. And it's like, oh, okay, great. I don't need to even think about it. Cause he has said he will do it right? or which we can assign you, it or whatever. Right. Which if you still wake up before me, then 
I would wake you, you up. You would just wake me up. But it kind of just gives me permission okay. the night before. So every night I'm going to tell you, hey, babe, wake me up in the morning. I got this. Yeah. All right. Duck soup. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's like I don't even need you to do it every night, but right. it's it's um it's really helpful yeah. to well, have that permission. In, I appreciate in you bringing that into the light and confessing that. Yeah. And um, yeah. Anyway, so that's this a, whole conversation we just powerful. had is something I would recommend you do as a new parent. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully your husband understands and is on board to support you um yeah part of me is like maybe kyle should do every first wake window <laughs> i'm down really i'm down because i'm just like i am never getting a full night's rest because we, i'm breastfeeding at night we we could totally do that <laughs> i'm not just saying that because we're doing this right now like i have no problem getting up with him i just have a problem getting up on my own <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, that's just the reality of it. So if you wake me up and say, hey, babe, he's up. Can you get him? I'm mm-hmm. going to be like, uh, and zombie, I'm going to grab him and I'm going to sleep, walk out of there. And then I'm going to take care of him, make my coffee. I'm going to get my day going and we're going to have a good day. Yeah. So I'm done. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Uh, should that be our last question? That's a pretty good one. I mean, do you want to end? Is there one more? Yeah. Why don't you just give a quick tip? Somebody wants to know what helps you fight against distraction, mindless media consuming. Ooh, <laughs> you guys ready to hate me? Wait, what? <laughs> so you guys ready to hate me? Oh, hate. I thought you said hit me. I was like, no, what? hate me. <laughs> oh, okay. What's your tip? Fast. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The power of fasting. It's not even something, and this is something I heard lately, and it's so true and it's so good. If you look in the Bible, it doesn't say when you feel called to fast. <laughs> it doesn't. No. It just says when you fast. Right. So it's not about being called. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this mess because I wrapped cords around me so he couldn't get the Bible doesn't say when you get feel called to fast. He says when you fast throughout the Bible, he talks about fasting all the time. There's power in fast. Um, I could do a whole video on this if you guys want me to. But ultimately, it comes down to the revelation that part of our identity is actually stepping into this place of obedience and fasting is a way it's I don't want to say like a shortcut, but it's a way to well i lost my i lost myself so it's a way to fast track your growth to fast track your spiritual maturity and progression so i don't even remember what the question was it was something about social media what helps you fight against distraction slash mindless media consuming Mm. yeah so this this is so much deeper right fasting we're talking about breaking off you know uh spiritual oppression and um all kinds of things in your life that are much deeper than social media distractions um that's the power of fasting right so fasting will bring you into a place of intimacy with the lord to give you fresh revelation to give you more of the fear of the lord that leads to wisdom and knowledge and um instruction and all of that right like it's there's so much power in it when you fast you receive more um through intimacy with the lord and through the revelation of identity you end up walking in more power and authority um there's a hunger and a thirst for the lord that comes through fasting right so it's so much deeper than just breaking off distraction breaking off social media distraction but it's a great way probably the best way that i could give you and i've seen this in my own life to break that off and then to step into true life with the lord using your time in a way that actually honors him and brings value into your life spiritually through time spent with him because fasting isn't just stopping one thing it's replacing that one thing with him right with um seeking him knowing him beholding him letting him show more of who you are in him to yourself stepping into obedience um you know being more faithful with the spiritual practices and disciplines that he you know calls us to walk in as disciples of jesus christ it's it's replacing your distraction your time spent scrolling your time spent watching tv these are my biggest things and replacing them with the lord to receive true life that sets you free and really puts you in this place of alignment with him where your well starts to fill up and that deep well starts to overflow with the springs of living water that he talks about so wow it's just so good. It's so good. So I encourage you, even if it's like a little fast here and there, I mean, you don't have to go full extreme and say, okay, I'm going to fast for the next three months, right? Um, I mean, I would say there is science behind it. It takes 21 days to break and create a new habit. Um, so I would say do a, at least a 21-day fast. When you're not dealing with food or water and it's just social media or electronics or TV and distractions, it's easier to do it for longer. Um, the thing is, once you do stop doing it, there's a good chance you fall back into those habits yeah. if you haven't done it long enough 
or if you haven't done it intentionally enough and actually replace those habits with him. Um, what do you think about that? So yeah, I could keep going on and on about fasting. Fasting is so powerful. Prayer and fasting. He talks about the two, right? Prayer and fasting with supplication. Looks like we're um, at zero minutes. Yeah. So we have to wrap it up. So anyway, that's it. That's it. That's it. I'm going to leave it at that. If you want to hear more, let us know. Um, but I encourage you just really, really, really press into fasting and prayer to get rid of the distractions and replacing it with the Lord. Um, and get into his word. Get a hunger for his okay. word. It's holy. It's powerful. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love so you but good. we have to go. All right. We got to go. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yes. Thank you, Pixie. For, <laughs> what do you want to say about that? I love Pixie. I'll have all the information linked in the description. Pixie truly is amazing. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan. Um, and that's it because yeah. it stopped. Oh. Oh, I love oh, that. Oh, now he does that. That was good ASMR. That was actually. Do we have to like. Oh, I guess the audio is still recording. So oh. I'll just insert this with a black screen. Um, we love you guys. And remember, Jesus, Jesus loves, loves you more. more. Legend. Say ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Okay, I gotta call Pastor. Okay.